Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jeremy Vanderloop here at Crest Community. It's our uh, Let's Get Coffee podcast. I'm with Anthony Hamlin, right? Hallman. Hallman. I knew I was going to mess it up. Like, right before this, I was like, yo, yo, yo. I know you as Anthony, but I, I'm bad with names. How am I going to pronounce Hallman? Hallman. You're with Hallman Law. And it's so funny. I jinxed myself right before this. I was like, dang it. I knew I'm going to do this. And I had to call you Hamlin. Now you're going to be Hamlin in my mind. Hallman. Hallman Law. Um, and uh, you've been here for, for a minute now. And we're just, I love seeing you here. You're always hanging out, doing different things. You're a lawyer. Yes. And uh, and so um, let's just jump right in. What, what type of law do you practice? So I do, uh, it's known as um, commercial litigation or business litigation. Uh, basically what that comprises of is really just breaches of contract between companies. There's some kind of dispute about their business arrangement. Um, I represent both sides. So I've brought lawsuits. I've defended lawsuits. Um and then I do general uh, corporate transactions and counseling. Okay. That's awesome. So who, who are some clients that you work with, like, like industry types and those type of things? Sure. Um, so I, I work with a member here, uh, Vince Serrano, mm -hmm. who you know. Um, he does solar. So I've, I've uh, as far as contract work, I've drafted, um, I've drafted uh, a subcontractor agreement for him. For his sales reps, yeah. Um, interestingly, interestingly enough, uh, a business litigation dispute for him. Um, I can't speak too much on it, sure, but sure, sure. he was previously selling solar for other folks. Oh, so he's like a non-compete. No, 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 no. He was. He's not been paid commissions. Oh, so sent out yeah, several sent out several yeah. demand letters Got on it. his behalf. Got it. All right. Well. I hope those demand letters work. Vince, <laughs> Vince is a good guy, and uh, you know I, I think a workman's worth his wages, right? If you work, if you work for it and you earn it, you should, you deserve it. You Absolutely, know? no matter what happens. Um, that's that's cool, man. So so let's talk. Are you from Tampa? Are you I'm originally a, born and raised in Tampa? I see. What's up, dude? Come on. I'm, <laughs> there's not very many of us around here. Yeah, right? the, the I Tampa grew up area. on Sheldon Road. Uh, yeah, town now, and country. I always say Tampa because people, but I was born and raised in Pinellas. Okay. Yeah, so still very much local. Right, right. But because there's like so many people I meet, like, oh, I just moved here from New Jersey mm -hmm. like last month. You're like, oh man. It's like yeah. we're, we're becoming like the tropical version of New York, right? Yeah, so it feels everybody's like right moving now. here. Um, but uh, so that's cool. So what was it like growing up here in Tampa and, and how, what inspired you to become a lawyer? So growing up in Tampa, um, I was, I'm the youngest of my family. Okay. Um, I have an older brother, two half sisters. Um, and, it was me and my brother, both my parents. Um, I was, I would say I was the golden boy. of The, the golden boy. Yeah. yeah. So I made really good grades. I was super athletic. Um, I was pretty personable um, in school. You know, um, I can specifically remember I was at Schwarzkopf Elementary. And uh, I think me and my family were out skiing, like right before winter break. And we had like a little party. And when I came back... The teacher was, you know, telling my mom, like, everybody was so sad. My, my nickname is Tukey. Tukey, all right. So See, I didn't know that. She, <laughs> she was like. Uh, Tukey, every everyone. Tukey. <laughs> she was like, everybody was so disappointed that, that Tukey wasn't in class on the party. So, you know, um, fast forward middle school. I went to, uh, well, I went to several middle schools. Can we just pause for a second? I'm sorry. My ADD is just make, what makes us fun. Yeah. Tukey, how did that come? Like, what is Tukey? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? So, You've had that since you were a little kid. Yeah. Okay. Like, out of the womb. Really? What so, does that mean? What's it? I mean. So Tuki has zero, zero meaning. meaning. Okay. Zero. All right. All right. Um, <laughs> it's spelled T U Q U I. Okay. Because my mother is Cuban. Oh, uh, okay. So the name came from my grandmother, my abuela, called me Puki uh, as a baby. Yeah. And um, my aunt, she. Um, she just was saying it wrong, and my brother <laughs> caught on to that. And by the time I was, you know, three, four years yeah, old, yeah, yeah. around other kids in the neighborhood, dude, everybody knew me as Tukey. Dude, that you are the only person I've met that has a nickname from birth that stuck, dude. Into and it's the, my rap nickname. It's your rap. So, all right, so you're you're in a rap. You're 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 creative. You make music. Yeah. yeah? 
that's awesome. I didn't mean so we're gonna jump onto onto that because <laughs> is I'm, I'm starting you know. But yeah, I'm, like that's too like my parents call me Tuki. That's to funny. This day. Yeah, As so it's grown, like grown it's man. like like you're legal. Have you legalized that? Have you like copyright? Like, this is my no, name. No. It's on my you know. No, 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 not you should because I'm going to. I'm gonna I'm gonna be called Tuki from now on. <laughs> No, that's so. So you went in the middle school um, here in Tampa. You, you you I grew up elementary school. Your name is Tukey, but you always been personable. Um, so we I, I cut you off at middle school. Oh, so in middle school, I got I like like I was the cool smart kid. Like I didn't hang out with any of the kids in the honors classes. Yeah, yeah. I hung out with like the athletes. Um, and <laughs> was that because you were doing their homework for them, and they were? No, no I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No. Um, so there was there was an award ceremony at the end of eighth grade year mm-hmm. and you know you got a heads up if you were gonna get something you just didn't know what it was yeah and I told my mom and she's like oh great we're gonna tell the family we're all gonna go and I was like I don't I don't want to go like why would I go to school yeah after school and ended up going and I got they called it at Ben Hill the President's Award, mm-hmm. and they literally gave it to. It was like the top overall male and female student of the of the school of the, of the whole school, yeah. For you know, acad- basically you like lost, all right? around. No, 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 no. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> like academics, athletics, you know, personality. Um, yeah, and I got it, that's and I awesome. didn't even want to go. So yeah, that's kind of who I was even through high school. So very personal, but highly intelligent. Be able to understand at the academics aspect of it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I I didn't really try in school until I got to law school. And so that drove you in down the path of like. So now let's fast forward, right? So law school, mm-hmm. right? So you're this is really cool. So you're a rapper, but you're also you're like a rapping lawyer. Yeah, I'm just gonna call that. That's like in. Like ABC News, really? Calls the rapping me lawyer. Tampa's rapping lawyer. We're gonna pull that up. I don't know. <laughs> Tampa's rapping lawyer. All right, that is like some solid PR. Right there. So I didn't even know that. <laughs> Off the cuff, Tampa's rapping lawyer. So, so you're a rapper. Um, you love music and hip hop, and and but but you're you're this academic, brilliant guy. And so now you practice. How long have you been practicing law now? I'm in my eighth year. Eighth year. Yeah. So you're just starting to get the hang of it. I. I would say I would say I can hold my own. I'm just kidding. Yeah. I, I've, I've got I've got this theory that it takes eight years to even like become like like to know if am I really going to enjoy this. Are you enjoying it still? I, I am. Yeah, I and mean, that's awesome. You're going to do the rest of your life then. It was. I think every lawyer goes through, um, sort of like every musician, every athlete is yeah. like, do I want to do this for the rest of my life? And I was I was sort of at that point um, between. So I went to law school in Miami, mm-hmm. and I was in Miami from 2012 until March of last year, yeah. almost ten years. And you know, I've been with um, I've been with a few firms at this point, done different types of mm-hmm. law, and I just nothing was fulfilling. And Got this it. last gig I had um, here in Tampa at a, a personal injury firm, I was just like, I'm I'm done. If mm-hmm. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do it for myself. Yeah, and that's. When was that? That was June of this year. Okay, so my theory is this, right? And I had this even in, in, in the music industry and in every business that it really, I, I and I, I probably will, will write this in one of my books one day, but it's, 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 it's probably, the more I have these conversations, the more this theory, this thesis is start, starting to come out, mm-hmm. that it's like the first two to three years in business or in life of like in a career, you're really just like trying to just survive. Yeah. And then you make a lot of mistakes on the third year because you think, oh, man, I'm, I'm, I can do this. And then you, like, trip over yourself, over your feet. Fourth year, you're licking your wounds and making <laughs> some big big mistakes. Be like, oh, I should not have done that. Yeah. And then the fifth year, you finally stabilize. You're like, oh, mm-hmm. take a breath. And then you start, all right, six, seven. All right, now I'm getting the hang of this. And there's that seven-year, like, itch type thing that goes, mm-hmm. man, I don't, do I really want to do this? And it's basically where all the endorphins are now, like, the fun's done for a second. You're just like. Man, is this something that it, I, mean, I have to I count the cost now? Is this something I want to do for the next 20 years, right. 30 years? And a lot of people don't even know how to ask that question. They just ignore the feeling. And so so you ask the question. sounds like you asked that question, and then you made a move, and you pivot into being an entrepreneur. Right. Because now you're on your own practice as of, like, a, a pretty early practice, pretty young one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, like months, because we're, we're sitting here in December. I don't know when this is going to be released. It's probably, like... Um, 
January or so of, of yeah, 23. It'll be maybe six right? So you're six yeah. months, dude. That's mm. knuckles on that, bro. That's awesome. Congratulations. Welcome to like the results. Like the only thing we're guaranteed as entrepreneurs is that we're going to lose money if we stop moving. Yeah. You're guaranteed. But you know what? There ain't no ceiling to this. Mm hmm. Right, so it's you, you, so dude, so you basically say I am going to practice law, so that I think this theory is right, because then it's like that between eight and ten years is when you're like, all right, now I'm going to scale this thing. And the set the seven year thing, you know, we've had conversations yeah. about our faith, and my mom is very, she's like the fa the faith, yeah, yeah, like the patriarch of the family, and she's always cited to the biblical principle of coming into your seventh season. Okay. And I'm going to be 35 in two years. Yeah. Um, and I think that's, I think two years from now is when Tukey will be his best self. Yeah. I mean, I turned 35 next, in, in April. So this is a, you said 35, the last po podcast we had was talking about 35 too. So I don't, uh, yeah. Yeah. So 35, I actually went home and talked to my wife a little bit about it. And I was like, I'm a little nervous about 35 now. <laughs> this stuff's changing in 35. Um, but yeah, so so I'm excited for you, man. I'm I'm real pumped about. So you got into so you you've practiced all sorts of law, yeah, in, in litigation. Now what I've learned is not a lot of litigators coming on the scene in our generation. I haven't. I haven't well, I would say there's not a lot of trial lawyers. That's what. I'm, yeah, yeah. So there's a difference though. So, okay, what's the difference? So, so a trial lawyer is legit. Like, okay, we don't have a settlement. We're court, going to trial. We're yeah, going to trial. Yeah, pick a jury and. In three days from now, we're going to have a decision on everything. I, I like you. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. a litigator is the guy that is crafting motions and objecting to all these little things. And really, he settles cases. He's, yeah. He's, he goes to court. He has hearings. But he settles before a trial. Got it. And okay. there's there's not a lot of trial lawyers anymore because trial is extremely risky and expensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. It is. It's it's a, my, my attorney um, who I, who's known me since I was three. My mom's a paralegal. I don't know if I told oh, you. Oh no. Yeah, yeah. My mom's that. a paralegal, and uh, I've got a great attorney who uh, basically even on any deal, whether it's a real estate deal or anything, he pretty much reviews everything. Yeah. Because <laughs> I think he'd, he'd kill me if he didn't. You know, type <laughs> thing. And he's unbelievable. He's, he's, I've learned so much about law and contracts and, and, and all the above. And and I, I've heard through the grapevine, like, you know, litigators and trial attorneys are very, like, the guys that, like, get in there and, like, just fight yeah. are very hard to, and because he does that. He'll go to he'll do trials and everything. And, mm -hmm. and, um, and it's just like, and I've talked to several attorneys. I don't really want to do that. I just want to move paper around or right. whatever, you know. And so that that's so that that speaks a lot to your personality. You're driven. You want you you, you I'm like competitive. You're competitive. Yeah. yeah. Where do you think that competitiveness came from? I mean, my whole family are, are entrepreneurs. My, okay. my dad, um, my dad, mom, and brother own and operate uh, cosmetology and barber school. Yeah. And you know, it's I've I feel like. I feel like I've had less brown in my house since I was a kid through my dad. Um, you know, it's always like, you know, the process. It's not the destination. Enjoy mm -hmm. the journey. Like all these motive. My dad to this day sends me and my brother a motivational quote every morning. Okay. Um, what, are you, what are your top three motivational quotes that your dad has ever said to you that just kept you going? See, he, he just gets, he just grabs like is there Is there any that y'all just stick out? Like for for me, a lot of my, I I look at lyrics. Okay. So, um, one that has been resonating with me a lot lately is um, Lil Baby. I don't know if you know the rapper Lil Baby. Maybe it's, I mean I'm, I'm not good with names. Like I said, I'm horrible with <laughs> names. So what, what's up? Uh, um, he he's got a song where he says, "All my pride gone, had to lose it all, and I got rich. I own five homes now. Some of this starting to make sense." Yeah. Staying hella focused, can't forget the bigger picture. Yeah. So it's like, you know. What about that speaks to you in the season you're in right now? The bigger picture, staying focused. Because it, 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 it especially with having my own practice, you know, um, I think, I think people have always looked, like I said, golden boy. Mm -hmm. People have always looked at me like, wow, Tukey's accomplishing so much and he's done so much. Um, I always think that, what people are perceiving is probably 
two to three steps ahead of where I actually am. Yeah, you yeah. know, I'm trying to figure out, you know, my finances and a budget mm-hmm. and a forecast and, you know, develop a real system yeah. to function like a real law firm. Um, and I think, you know, we're all content creators as entrepreneurs mm-hmm. in this day and age. So I think people see some of the stuff on social media and, you know, uh, ABC Action News interview yeah. and, you know, now people think like I'm out at a bar and it's like, oh, drinks on Took. And it's like, hey, yeah, my, <laughs> my money is not like that. Isn't yet. that funny, right? You know? Yeah. yeah, the perceived perception, yeah. right? The perception of, of someone being successful. But but I guess the the follow-up to that is like focusing on the bigger picture, like all that is possible, you know? It's it's in my grasp. It's mm-hmm. not unreachable. Yeah. Where, where, where's Tukey in 10 years? Tukey in 10 years. How old are you going to be in 10 years? I'll be 30. I'll be 43. All right. So 10 years. What's 43-year-old Tukey look like? I think I think by then I should be remarried, okay. hopefully a couple kids. Um, I think I'll still be in Tampa. Um, I'd love to have, you know, half an acre, acre in Odessa. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know that I would be practicing like day to day grind like I am mm-hmm. now. I, I'd like to see become more of a you know an overseer, a like manager, a CEO, a CEO attorney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you know, bring me in for the big deposition or the big mm-hmm. hearing. Um, yeah, I think that's that's awesome, man. So you got you got some dreams, and I, I loved how you started. With just like who you are, you know, you started, I'm going to be this old, I'm going to be, how many kids I want, mm. be remarried, I want to have this, you know, this house here, and because uh, that, that's so special for me, every year I do that, right, every every year I, I, dr- I try to dream out. Yeah, you got to, um, you got to see it, all these inventions we see in the world mm-hmm. come from right here. Yeah, you got to set targets, mm-hmm. right, and I, I, I talk a lot about that, about setting those targets, and uh it's pretty cool that you have some t- some targets set, and I mean, you're you're six months in to this new journey. Have you? I mean, I've been an entrepreneur, so this is like like you're just you just dove right in. There's like no. Yeah, I mean, I I didn't I didn't even leave my prior firm with a book of business. Yeah, like my first client was literally a, another law firm that I was doing hourly work for. So. All I knew is that I didn't want to work for anybody anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't have anybody else to go work for. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's and it's slowly it's slowly become a, um, I guess, in, uh, you know, inverse graph where I'm doing more more of my time is spent on my own clients mm-hmm. as opposed to um, hourly work for other attorneys. So so let's speak to some young entrepreneurs who are literally like right behind you, right? What have you learned in the last six months that you didn't know six months ago? Specifically in business and 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 that you weren't anticipating. I think I anticipated. I didn't think I don't think I realized how much um dedication would go behind it. It's just like it's all on me now. Like mm-hmm. yes, there's people that support me, they'll encourage me. If I fall, they'll help me get up. But day to day, like, I don't have to be to work at any given time. I don't, I don't have to go to bed at any given time. So if I'm out, you know, on a Monday night, football night, and I have 10 beers with some of the people mm-hmm. I probably shouldn't be hanging out with, the next day, I just cost myself potentially, you know, yeah, uh, a stressful rest of the month because mortgage is coming due. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so how how and and maybe a statement or less. What how, how do you define that? I say it's. Um, I would say persistence. Yeah, a persistent commitment to beating yourself yesterday. It's an ownership mindset too. Yeah, right. Like like that's a mindset you have to create. Mm-hmm. Beating yourself yesterday. Yeah. So you're competing against yourself. Right. Right. Yeah. You're like, and, and, and I love that because John Maxwell, I, have you heard of John Maxwell? Yeah, yeah. John Maxwell's awesome. And, um, and one thing that he said, and some of my other mentors have said this, is that comparison is a thief of all joy. You heard that? I have. Yeah. Comparison is a, a thief one. of all joy. What does that mean to you? Comparison is a thief of all joy. 
I mean, it's lit- It's pretty literal to me. Yeah. Um, but just like your your happiness has to come from within. Mm-hmm. You know, whether you're comparing yourself to someone else, what they have, what you don't, or I'm not where they are. Like, if you're doing that, you're not working on you. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. And so many people get distracted, right? And they're like, oh, man, if I could just, they're comparing themselves to another attorney, right? Mm-hmm. And then you're trying to, sometimes what I found, what I, this is how it almost killed me um, and made me a bankrupt, was I was trying to jump to try to get to where my friends were at in real estate development, mm-hmm. you know, but they had seven years on me. Right. And I was only in it for a year. And, it, like, it, and you couldn't miss steps, you know. And so I realized that literally stole my joy and almost, like, cost me everything instead of just doing what you talked about doing. That's that's some solid wisdom, man, For, for uh, to, in six months. That's one of the nuggets, right? That's a foundational nugget of entrepreneurship, what you've already talked about, which is, you know, I'm competing against myself, and – I got to live like no one else is willing to live. Right. So I can live like no one can live. Yep. And that's the age old statement, right? So many people have said it in so many different ways, but that is the truth about being an entrepreneur, especially a young entrepreneur like yourself, where you have so much to learn, but you make, and I, this is why I'd encourage a lot of guys, make all your huge, giant mistakes right now. Yeah. Because they cost way less. Right. Right. And so, it, and, and, and there's, because that's the whole thing is like, that you, you learn through books, through mentorship, or through a lot of pain. Yeah. Right? And experience. And that's, the, you, you buy that education, you know, and you, and you buy your team by hiring the wrong person. You're like, man, I should have never done that. Right. Right? And, it's <laughs> an exp- and you're always, I think that's the thing that you're always learning. It's like, man, I should have never hired that. I should have asked more detailed questions about this individual. Right. And um, and so that's that's awesome, man. So, and, and that whole thing is like, anybody who's working a job, they can go out and have 10 beers Wake up the next morning and, and they pr- get a check. Pretty much just steal time, <laughs> yeah. right? You're like their productivity is like way low, and they can just fake it, and they're not even caring. Versus yeah. you're like, yo, if I do that, um, man, it's it, it could de- it could literally detriment like my life, right? right yeah, and that's kind of. I mean, I eat literally eat what I kill. Yeah, that's it. That's know? it, right? There's no guarantee. Yeah. You go, All right, I got to really outthink this, mm-hmm. right? And and. And so I don't want to like I, I could get like really because I didn't realize that's how young you were. So I'm, I'm, my passion is like leading leaders and young entrepreneurs. I just love it. If I could help save somebody three or four years, yeah. And so I don't want to just like jump into just like, <laughs> hey, you know. but uh, but it's that I'm you, so I, I, I'm trying to ask. Yeah, yeah, we'll have to hang out a little bit more. And uh, if you need, you know, and and, and we'll we'll do we'll do some more one on one time. Cool. Um, just to because I'd I'd love to serve you in that way, man. But. Um, so just asking more questions because this is awesome. I didn't realize how young you were in your in your business. Mm-hmm. And so we had we had David on here and he's like a year into his business. There was some pretty good in, in, intel from that. And so that's the finance guy? Uh he's a fintech headhunter. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, David Nay. He uh he does um that's you think of the other David guy. Yeah, David yeah. David uh David Henning. Yes. Um they're both founders. They're, they're both great guys. <clears throat> uh, they're first ten mem- part of the first ten here at Cress. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, so he, he was talking about some of these different struggles. And so now like look at now trying to like, try to look through the glass of six months in, that's a really unique perspective that I want you to be able to look back on this. Like, well, I can't believe that. And so what are, what are the, what are the three main struggles now that you're having that you weren't anticipating having owning a business that kind of hit you from, from like behind? Like, oh man, I wouldn't like. It's kind of like my last question. Mm-hmm. Like, 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 what are you struggling with right now as a young entrepreneur? And you're just like, oh, wow, this is, is it administratively, is it marketing, is it your sales process, your cycles, your, all these different things. Like, what do you, because you, you haven't even been big enough to know, like, what your cycle is. Right. You haven't even hit, like, four, four quarters. Right, right. right? I, I, I think one of them is just the delicate balance of how long do I do everything before I bring someone on board. Yeah. Um, like, you know, a secretary or paralegal. I'm, I'm definitely not in a, I, I don't have the workload to need another attorney yet. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's like, yeah, at what point do I delegate some of this stuff out so I could spend, you know, if, if I'm working nine hours, how do I, how do I make the full nine hours or eight hours mm-hmm. substantive legal work as opposed to five or six substantive hours and then the rest is admin. Yeah. 
you know. Well, because well, I mean, we, we, uh, basically the 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 angle and the filtration system to look through that the filter is you have revenue generating activity mm-hmm. and operational activity and administrative act- activity, right. right? That's not generating revenue, mm-hmm. and so you're having to now do all of it, right? Which is a big hurdle in scaling and hiring, right? Somebody is absolutely super scary. I mean, when I hired my first employee, I was like, how am I going to afford this? Yeah. And now I got like, you know, five, right? right? And it's still, how am I going to afford And you're this? responsible yeah, now yeah. for that. Like, I mean, in a way, you're their meal ticket. Hands down, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're, they're guaranteed every two weeks, right? Yeah. You know, so I'm like, okay, now I got to keep moving this stuff. Right. Um, and so I have to be the visionary. I have to think through it. I have to process through it. And you're, you're in that place in an early stage and I think it's awesome that you're already thinking about it because for sure it is not how do you do something, it's who you get to do something with mm-hmm. and for you. And um, and I, I think you know, there's so many different things and angles you can look at with that struggle. Um, but a, a lot of it's like your numbers, right? you got to quantify them. Um, an employee should help generate, I mean, I've heard 4X, 5X salary. Yeah. So they, but there's the cool thing about this is when you're a young entrepreneur um, is that – you can literally delegate through bartering and different things like that and yes. finding third-party services that aren't a W-2. Mm-hmm. And so um, definitely one thing that you have is your speedboat compared to a giant, like, cruise ship. Right. And so you can think differently and disrupt some industries just by, is there a third-party service that I can pay X but I don't have to hold the liability? Mm. you know so i mean we i'd love to look at multiple different angles yeah. but a lot of it's going to be what's my workload like and when you're grinding and starting a business i mean it's like it's 12 hour days 14 hour days and your goal is to systematize it with controls right right controls and systems they're both systems the controls are basically you know you know what controls are and systems are before i, I mean like checks and balances or? kind of yeah yeah basically so controls are system that is like if you don't do it, the company will hem the hemorrhage cash and will die. Mm. That's a control. Okay. It's a it's a thing that has to happen in rotation. And then systems are like integrations and processes so that once you learn something and pull a lever, you don't have to go back through the process of doing it again. So you begin to create systems that communicate together and that's what makes us a scalable company. Mm -hmm. So it's not really about how many people you put into something. It's how your systems are looking. And so you, you can start developing your internal systems right now as if somebody is running that, even though you're the one running it. Right, right, right. And then once you're doing it, those systems to create these efficiencies Mm -hmm. that then just create movement. And now you can bring somebody in and delegate that to them on a moving cycle with that person. Does that make sense? Yeah, Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I didn't mean to like jump like no, 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 no. But that, so, what, what's another thing that you're? So you you brought it up. Uh, well, you kind of brought it up. Is I I guess I didn't realize um, how cyclical mm-hmm. things could be in like I mean that's a cycle, in a matter yeah. of a week. Yeah, like yeah, you know, one week I'll get four new clients, and you mm-hmm. know I'm taking intake calls, which is you know yeah. basically deciding whether to sign up someone or not. And then it's like the next two weeks, it's just like I'm doing only hourly work for other uh-huh. firms. And it's like, what happened? There's a you pattern know? to it. You have to be able to identify the pattern. Yeah. It's a puzzle. I haven't seen it yet. I haven't. <laughs> I don't think I've seen it long enough. How frequently are you looking? At, at what? At the pattern. I guess not. I guess not specifically at that, no. If you're not seeing it because you're not looking for it. Right. Right. So Ryan's here. How frequently do we look at patterns? How frequently do we look at patterns here? <laughs> Every day. Every day, <laughs> right? We have our huddles, the eight-minute huddles. Do a huddle by yourself, right? And so um, we, we do this huddle model model that's eight to 50. He's laughing because it's like, yeah, I know where this is going. Uh, because it's this whole thing. And we got this from Vern Harnish from the Scaling Up, Mastering the Rockefeller Habits. Okay. Do you read a lot or no? For work. I, for work, all right, all right, all right. We'll get on that. We'll get on that. Um, but this whole thing is like we, we kind of adapted this scaling up model. Um, you know, Traction does it as well, which is Dan Sullivan and some of these other guys. Um, really good coaching companies. But we took the huddle model um, for daily metrics, right? Mm-hmm. So we do – this is just to help you. I mean, this is an infrastructure for us. So 
on the daily, we are basically each member. You know, you know, are you familiar with KPIs? You heard of the current term KPI? So a KPI is called a key performance indicator. Okay. So you're trying to find out what is, um, and your basis KPIs are very simple. One is gross revenue, expenses, right? Leads, closed leads, net operating income, NOI. Okay. Those are your first five foundational KPIs of every business. How much money's coming in? How much money am I spending? How am I getting people to know that I'm doing business? And how many people are, am I closing? And what's my gap between that? Right? So you find out what your cash gap is, your close ratio, all these different things. But if you're not paying attention daily to trends, mm-hmm. then that's going to take that much longer to identify a scalable model for your own company and your own practice. Okay. Does that help? Yeah. Yeah. So if you start doing that now, bro, dude, you'll crush so many other people. <laughs> In a healthy way, right? Yeah, You'll yeah. just and and one thing my mentor always says, by the way, like to, to help you not rush this thing, is I thank God every day for my competitors because they're keeping my 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 customers in business long for me to go get them. <laughs> and you go, I love that. I like it. I love it. You know, it's like I, I pray for my I pray I pray and thank God every day for my competitors because they're keeping my customers in business uh, and waiting for me to come get them. That's, right? that's the whole thing. It's like that's how they're thinking. Like I'm gonna go get them. Yeah. I kind of paraphrased it, but that's your whole your whole goal. So don't rush the process. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, number three. What's another thing you kind of? Um, I mean, we we talking about systems, mm-hmm. and it's easy when you're in when you're in a company that has systems. You're evil. You're able to say like, oh, this, you know. Why did why is it like this? I, yeah, yeah. I, I, specifically, I remember yeah. I remember when I used to get assignments because uh, I started off as a government lawyer, mm-hmm. um, and then I when I switched to private, when I would get assignments, like my boss would be like, "Hey, here's the case file name. Start looking through the documents." And like the way that these files were piecemealed together was always like just, inefficient deficiencies, right? Yeah, and what I've come to realize is it's not necessarily the law firm. It's really clients are just bad record keepers. Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, they take screenshots of some emails, they download Mm -hmm. some emails, they have word documents of some files, PDFs of some spreadsheets of others. Uh, But I think what I'm starting to learn is, and what I'm, what I'm struggling with is similar to delegating how much time do I spend like making the file perfect and doing replicating it over every file? Yeah. Rather than just getting to work. So for me, is this is a classic model of who, not how. Okay. Right? I don't care about how am I gonna do this. What I care about right now is who is gonna do this task. Mm-hmm. And for that, as a young entrepreneur, what you have at your fingertips right now is the speedboat, like I was talking about earlier, and you have an ever-growing, rapidly-paced, moving employee that you really only have to pay once, and they don't ever complain. Sometimes you pay them monthly. Sometimes you pay them every day. But they never complain, and that employee is called machine learning, AI, technology, Mm -hmm. this computer that's walking around everyone's pockets. Mm -hmm. And so, unfortunately and fortunately, the world is changing and it's our job is to adapt and adopt how it's changing and how things practice. And then you can disrupt an entire industry, Mm. right? As a young entrepreneur. And so what I would do is I would create a system using technology and some type of forum fill that then makes it convenient, makes it easy and makes it and gives the client energy that how allows them through a, a systemized questionnaire through technology that then uploads into your cloud basis, like mm. Google Drive or something like that. But like you, they have to have an upload file, and you can create some type of like code system or something within it that Sub-category. that that thing that that thing literally syncs up and uh, and uh, itemizes it mm-hmm. for you. And now all of a sudden, you just bought so much time. Yeah, and you don't even need to hire a person for that because you got the other who which is your client, to actually upload it. So if you can find a way, a lot of times as entrepreneurs, you have you, we are pain doctors. You're trying to find where the pain is in an industry, simplify it, make it easy. 
Mm. Right? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, so yeah. you've already so you already know through experience, this is a very painful thing. Clients are really bad record keepers. Well, then you can educate the client. Hey, you know, I need to you're gonna know your case better than I do, but by the end of it, I need to know your case is as good as you, if not better than you. Mm-hmm. Right? That's your first statement. Yeah. To your client. That's what my attorney says to me. Because I go super fast and I'm always working on these crazy complicated deals and <laughs> everything's connected, you know? And so I hope that helps though. Like that, no, that, that's definitely. like like off the cuff. Like I'm not even in your industry. I would go, yeah. bro, you you have the power right now being a solopreneur. That's what it's called. Solopreneur. Mm-hmm. Right? I love solopreneurs. I was a solopreneur for the majority. I, I, the last 15 years of my life, I've been an entrepreneur. It's pretty much my entire adult, adult life. And up until like two years ago, two and a half years ago, I was solo on everything. Mm-hmm. And so I used 1099 subs. I used technology. And I had to learn how to adapt with emerging technology. So I love software. But your internal systems, before you automate it with software and machine learning, you have to have your infrastructure of systems in place or else you're going to automate the chaos. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's like getting through your pipe drive and going like, how am I going to do this in your pipeline? And But it's, but it's fil- learning your filter in your mind mm-hmm. to start thinking that way. All right, not how, but who. Who's going to own this task? And that who could easily be a software. Yeah. Does that help or no? No, it does. Yeah. And then, dude, you know the pains of your industry more than anybody else. Right. But a lot of times, guys, disruptors are guys that, like, have no business being in your business, but that puts you out of business. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, they, like, this, like that, that's, that's how I define a disruptor. They have no business being in your business, and they put you out of business. Wow. Uber's a disruptor, right? Yeah. And no business being, they were a software company. Airbnb, disruptor, right? No business, and they weren't in the, in the hotel industry. Right. But they put hotels on their feet. They mm-hmm. put the taxis on their feet. Yeah, those type of things, right? So does that make sense or no? No, it does. Like you're, you're, you're positioned to just, but you, you want to create solutions. Entrepreneurs create solutions. Yeah. And if you can create the, the easy solution for your clients through education to understand, hey, and you, it's an education process, and then you begin to weed out through abundance mindsets for scarcity mindset, not every person is going to be the person you want. Mm -hmm. So before they get to you, you have a questionnaire. You have this type of thing that they fill out. And you can find out if the personality is going to actually sync with you and if it's the case you want to do. Mm. So I don't I don't mean to like ramble on in like a coaching thing, but that's the just uh that's legit. Yeah. So what I don't know, what do you think of that? What I just said. I I think it's good advice. I mean it's something that coupled with the patterns, I think you know, could definitely make me more efficient. Yeah. And that's, that's the thing. Like for me, where are we at? We're, we're doing pretty good. Um, like the three E's. Did we ever talk about the three E's or no? Mm-mm. So I came up with this thing called the three E's with, uh, with a buddy of mine. And it's how do I identify the right tasks for me? Does it give me energy? Am I efficient? Am I effective at it? Mm. If I don't strike all three, it's a task. Even if, even if it gives me energy, if it's not no longer good use of my time, it's not efficient. I need to find a who for it. Mm, I like that a lot. Yeah, there's a lot of little nuggets we could hang out and talk about. <laughs> I don't know but we have enough time in the hour. Um, so those are three things. You, why don't you re- kind of recap a little bit and like like some of like this dialogue. What what were some takeaways that you took away? Um, to chew on rather than being frustrated with the you know the cycles, the unanticipated cycles of the businesses, try to find the pattern in it to course correct or mitigate um i think the 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 as frequently as possible yes um (laughs) delegating you know making a decision on is this a task that i need to be handling or you know can i involve some kind of technology or other person to to do this in a similar fashion um without you know expending too much money um and i think the last, oh, systems. Yeah. Just just constantly, you know, problem solving. That's being an entrepreneur, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you will do that the rest of your life. Yeah. Crap, there's a problem. Where's the solution in this? Yeah. Where, where, how do I stop? How do I counterweight this this train that's going to crush me? How do I take this weight and pivot it, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, well, so with that, man, are you having fun? Yeah. Yeah. So we're we're on the Let's Get Coffee podcast, and you got some liquid coffee. You got pre coffee, <laughs> pre coffee. That's what we call this. I got some pre coffee over here too. It's just water <laughs> before it's gone through the the. We didn't get that bean juice in there. No. What else do people call that? Call I mean coffee is so good. It is. 
but you've already had too many, too much coffee today. I've had so an energy drink and two coffees today. Oh man! All right, so you're a member of this thing called Crest Community. Yeah. Right. We'll kind of segue into that. Why'd you join Crest? Like, what what inspired you? Why why did you even join this space? So when I when I left my full time job, everything I started doing was remote. Um, so I I. I didn't really have an office space in my house. I eventually remodeled my guest bedroom into an office slash music studio. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I think what it was, it's not like I wasn't producing at home, but I started to realize I'm, you know, I'm, I'm either done or I get distracted by about four to five hours of work. Yeah. And if this machine keeps developing steam the way I want it to, I'm not going to be able to sustain what's coming. Yeah. And that would be a shame to, you know, not be able to capitalize on a growing business because I'm in an environment that is, you know, capping my productivity. That's distracting, right? At your home. Yeah. Dog. Yeah. Laundry, you know, um, and uh, so I, I met Vince, and I told Vince that I was going to consider renting space, actually from the, the owner of a real estate brokerage where his wife is an agent. Um, I, I think we settled on, like, I was going to rent a back room for, like, 250 bucks. Mm-hmm. And the space, you know, is, like, half the size of this room. Yeah, yeah. Um. And, you know, Vince and I were starting to get more of a rapport. And he said, hey, I want you to come check out this place with me that uh, I think Ben. Yeah, he's one of our members. Yeah. yeah. Ben Millar. So Ben and Vince know each other. They're both in solar. Right. Yeah. And Vince had never come out here. And. Um, oh, he'd been out here a lot with Ben. Oh, he had. Yeah, yeah. He'd, oh. he'd been meeting with Ben a lot. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, so I'd known Vince. For- he made it seem like, hey, come check out this place <laughs> with me. So, um, I'm starting to really like Vince. <laughs> so <laughs> I actually, I was pretty yeah. excited about it and I wake up super early. Yeah. Go to the gym. Um, so I, I came over here. We were supposed to meet here at 10. Yeah. We were having a meeting. We were, we were, yeah, we, we, were, in a, we, like were we were in one of our huddles. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I showed up at like eight fifteen, just to like scope it out, had coffee, talked to you guys a little bit. Um, and I was like, man, you know, this is, this is legit. Like I like. The, like, there's just something about, I don't know, call it old school or whatever, but just something about leaving the house and showing up to work every day. Yeah, yeah, having you know, a space, a third space. It's, just, it's if, if I was doing that for the last eight years for someone else, why not, you know, almost respect myself enough to do it? Yeah. As opposed to rolling out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Maybe putting on a t-shirt. <laughs> Working from home. Everyone, my, my friend says everyone loves to work from home, but they don't like officing from home. They don't like commuting right. from home. They don't like to have, you know, that's almost like their space where they need to have that break. Yeah. Right? Be like, hey, this is my this is my safe space, mm-hmm. right? At home. Yeah. I need to, yeah, what, hang out, hang out with my dog, bring friends over, whatever, right? right. This is, and then work. Oh, how do I create these barriers, right, of, mm-hmm. of work and home and it, it is a struggle that a lot of people are having, and and, um, and so that's so you were looking for that that other safe space that and and so so why did you choose Crest out of every everywhere else? Um, so I I, I mean the space was just better than a closet. <laughs> well, and, I hope so. Yeah, that's good. And then I had I had went to one other potential um, lease. Mm-hmm. space it was a little above my price range and it was very dated um in the sense it's like it was you know it's that type of law firm that there's they still have a library yeah, yeah. and you know uh i don't even know what you call that carpet that looks like like shag carpet like they're long stuff? no no you know the carpet <laughs> that has like like almost like marble looking oh yeah 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 just I don't know old, either. Just super old school. Um, Call it vintage. A little vintage. less offensive when you say vintage. Vintage. <laughs> just kidding. Um, and, yeah, so between those two options and then coming here and seeing it was a very modern space. Um, and I think 
for me, I think the biggest, uh, I think the biggest factor was, man, I'm, I'm going to meet some other entrepreneurs Mm -hmm. and, you know, that could be potential business. That could be, um, just good advice. That could be just them introducing me to other people that could be leads, uh, and, and just wanting to be around like-minded people. Yeah. Got it. So that, that was that was why you joined Crest, right? So you wanted you realized your productivity was kind of dropping. Mm-hmm. You need to go some space, and then the atmosphere was cool. You like you like the vibe, yeah. Um, and then just the potential access to the community, to other entrepreneurs, and the network that naturally happens, correct, through being in a space like this. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Well, that's good. That's one of the reasons. That's one of the main things that we're trying to do. <laughs> so that's a good thing. It worked. It worked. Yeah. Um. So what have you gotten out of this space and really out of out of this community? I mean. Chris is more than just these four walls. We're the, we're, we're, the, we're the axle point of connection, right? But so what have you gotten out of this space that you were not anticipating to get out of this space, if anything? I think, I think some of the conversations I've had with, with members, founders, um, just very organic, but impactful conversations about just becoming not even just a better entrepreneur, like a better person. Like yeah. Travis and I, um, you know, we, we, I, I get here pretty early. He's usually one of the first people here to open up the coffee shop. And, you know, we've just had like some pretty deep conversations. We're both young guys talked a little bit about, you know, women. He's not really been in any serious relationship. I just got a divorce a year ago. And then I think you came in on one of those conversations <laughs> and your advice was essentially like, and, and Vince is giving me similar advice is, you know, put your energy into you and you will attract something essentially beyond, beyond your wildest, wildest dream. dream. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So just, I, I didn't, I didn't really expect that. And, um, one thing, uh, that I didn't know when I signed up, that was here is just the faith culture Mm -hmm. and you, you prayed over me before hearing the other day. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which which I described to people is like, it was so cool because whether or not you, whether or not you knew I was a believer, you did it in such a nonchalant, like unimposing way Yeah, that I don't think you would have offended or creeped out anybody. Yeah, yeah, well, we, yeah, we, so, so, Crest obviously is not like a, a, any type of like a faith organization. No, no, no. But, you know, for me, like, I do have faith. I do have my belief. And, you know, and, and so it's who I am. It, it's, it's the whole culture of who I am and what I'm trying to create. Cause I just love our culture of community and camaraderie and, yeah. and just those type of things, like, like coming alongside each other and helping one another. Right. And so I thank you for saying that. That's awesome. And I, and I, I did know that we had similar, similar views. Mm-hmm. There's, I pick up on conversations, <laughs> right? Like, and I was like, oh, I, I, okay. Because it's, you know, we've got, a, we got people from all walks here. But, uh, but yeah, so there, there is that. There's that camaraderie and that connection. And even my friends that are of, of other faiths, our members that are of other faiths here, um, well, I call them friends now because I've met them. They've joined as a member and then we became friends. We have such a common bond of just like principle and... I believe the morality of God's written on everyone's heart. Mm-hmm. And it's just, who am I to challenge somebody? Uh, if they, you know, I, I just want to represent why I believe what I believe when when it's asked, you know? But I, I think our faith, because we, we, we come from the same faith, is really caught rather than taught. So what mm-hmm. you just talked about, right? Mm-hmm. That, that's a catching moment. Like you caught yeah. camaraderie. You caught our faith. Right. Yeah, you don't, like, push it. No. Yeah. No, you know, why, why would I? Mm-hmm. Right? Because, so I'm glad that that's awesome, man. That that makes me feel good because that was just, you know, we we had bonded. And I was like, you have you got a hearing, man. Let's just pray together, yeah. you know, because I knew we I knew we 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 uh, we we believed in that same thing, right? You know, so but yeah, it's it's been fun. I've actually been asked, oh, do you have to be of faith to be a part of this? Be like, why would you ask that? <laughs> you know, and 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 they go, oh, well, I just assumed since you converted an old church that this might be. I was like, I uh, I don't even think of that anymore. Yeah. But uh, so it's funny that you brought that up because yeah, it's definitely definitely a really cool atmosphere mm-hmm. that just is just open. We've had people from both sides of politics, by the way, get together too. Do you know okay. that? No, no. Oh, dude, it's it's uh, we're like 
pretty much breaking down all the walls <laughs> that it says you're never supposed to do. You yeah. know, and you're like, oh, well, we've talked about this. We've talked about that. That's cool. And, uh, yeah, so you got me rambling because I didn't realize. I totally forgot about that. I spaced about that, <laughs> that, that, that we did that. I, that. I remember that now, though. I mean, how'd that go? That went good? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, good. good Great work. Good outcome, yes. <laughs> They do. Um, all right, so so the the we're kind of wrapping up. I can't. This kind of a, yeah, we're doing good. We're doing good on time. So with that said, man, that so so you you joined really because of our of our ancillary services, the ancillary plays of just having a cool space that allows you to because we I always say like Crest is a quality community, and our promise is that there's a space to thrive, connect, and dream for entrepreneurs, creatives, and leaders. Right. Everything else is an ancillary like canvas. So this space, I'm learning every day about people and and their needs and how they're using just space, you know, because it's just it's it's just block and mortar, you know. Mm-hmm. But um, it's really neat to see how like you're using the space versus how like another you know member uses the space, and it's just because it's it's like it's it's like you're the artist of the space and you're painting the image however you need it, and I just I'm learning so much. Well, we could do this, we could do that. Right. And just like, because, it, it, and that's why I love doing these podcasts is I've, I learned so much from you today and just about you today. But with that said, kind of learning, and I, I preface this. So I celebrate failures. We just celebrate them. You, and, and you either win or you learn. It's Henry Ford for you right there. And so we want to, me and my team, as we grow and scale, I think you know the vision of this, right? How big yeah. we want to, how big we want to grow this. Yeah. And just really want to make a splash, you know, legacy splash. For the next, you know, f- you know, fifty to you know, two hundred years, right? How do we get just conversations and connections again, like mm-hmm. this? And um, and so with that, the holy, like the whole like daily metric grind and just learning. How am I failing as a leader, as 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 an operator? How is my team failing? Uh, what can we do better? What are we missing? Is there anything at all that you would say? You know what? I wish. You did this, or you did this. And I didn't like it. Mm. Um, so I'm 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 in a package where I I just work in the open space, mm-hmm. um, and obviously there's not unlimited, you know, designated workspace where you yeah. can leave something overnight. Um, I guess because of that, I would like to see because I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily want to have to bump up to a price point that I don't, I don't need to incur yet. Mm -hmm. I think one thing, one easy solution I could see is like, um, having like lockers, Okay, you know, somewhere, you know, if I don't know, maybe. So so instead of like going like to the upper room where it's like several hundred dollars more a month. Right. Just a little bit of bump for a locker space. Yeah. Right. Somewhere, you know, maybe someone, um, it's a great suggestion. Maybe someone, you know, we're not going to leave our laptops yeah. here, but maybe I leave a monitor, yeah, you know, or something like that. Um, the uh, one I was talking to Travis about was uh, you guys right outside of the cafe when you're coming over this way. There's like a there's like a seating seating deck, and I was like, hey, is this? One day I had left my, I had left my computer at Vince's, um, and I was trying to look at some stuff online before a hearing. Cause I could access everything, and I was like, "Can I? Can I use this computer?" And um, I don't remember what he said, but he said that you guys had talked about either having like an iPad or like a, a like a monitor or like a desktop area. Yeah, we're talking about hyper focus areas where people can re- like reserve like like full on like cubicles with screens. Yeah, yeah, we're talking about doing that in the other building. That would be sick. Yeah, and we've talked about lockers. Yeah, we just hadn't had any, had any input if it was somebody would use them. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think I think for sure. Like um you know, even just having like, you know, being able to leave a, a sweater here, or, yeah. you know, a blanket or something. Try to get know? it cold. And you're saying you, you keep <laughs> you saying, "Yo, I'm trying to beat around the bush, but you keep this place way too cold. You should probably save some money." And No, uh, no, is that temperature is I would say it's really the weather change. It is the weather change, and I'm trying to save some money. <laughs> We just haven't addressed the, adjusted the thermostats to, to turn the heat on. Um, we should this weekend. This weekend's going to be cold. Is it? Yeah, oh, it's going to be the coldest because uh, it's the week of Christmas. So yeah. this is going to be the coldest Christmas since uh, in like 30 years. Really? Yeah. Hmm. 
25 years. It's going to be like 33 degrees. So it's going to be nuts. Anything else, man? Anything else that we can grow, we can learn from, that we're failing? Um, no, I don't think so. No? All right, dude. Well, what's your website? Hallman Law, H A L M O N L A W dot com. Hallman Law dot com. You have socials? Yeah. What's your socials? So, personal social is uh, Tuki813 ESQ, T U Q U I813 ESQ. Uh, Hallman Law is just literally Hallman Law without the are, dot com. Are we, are we following you on Instagram? You following us? I'm following you guys. Okay, cool. I want to make sure I, we're following I, you. I think you guys sure. follow me. Yeah, we so. try to follow every member. That's something yeah. that we try to do. I don't know if I told you that. But every <laughs> member, we try to follow them. Yeah, that's a break in my communication. <laughs> Ryan, who's over content. Um, <laughs> let's try to follow every member. Um, there's a learn right there. Oh, I think our lawn guys are here. I don't know. The mics are picking that up. But um, all right, dude. So this has been awesome, man. Yeah, absolutely. We gotta, let's Thank get coffee again. Me. Yeah, I'll, and, I'll have coffee. Yeah, yeah. What do you enjoy about this? I think uh, I think it was, you know, it's going to make me leave and have some thought-provoking sessions with myself. Dude, they're for sure picking it up now. You hear that? Yeah. <laughs> well, I think that's the end. The lawn guys have come in and said, <laughs> you guys are done. We're getting ready for Christmas. So you said it's thought-provoking stuff? I think it's going to prompt me having some thought-provoking you know, one-on-ones with myself. Bro, that's it. Yeah. This is space to come and rig your life. We talked about that already or no? Rig my life? Rig your life, bro. No. <laughs> you got to rise, increase, and grow. Okay, okay. Rise the occasion, ingre- increase your momentum, and grow your impact. Nice. That's what we want, man. So that's awesome. All right. It's a challenge. All right, guys, thanks so much for coming. Thank you, sir. Tuki is the man. Uh, go to their website. We're going to blast it up there again. And the type of law you practice is business, litigation, and transaction. And transaction. Yeah. So if you're a business owner, if you're an entrepreneur, you need contracts, you need anything like that, you're in trouble, you need to sue somebody, you're being sued, um, talk to this guy. You need, you need, you know, you need, and I'll, I'll kind of preface this, you need your team. If you're an entrepreneur and a business owner, you need a good attorney, you need a good CPA. Those are your first two key players on your team. They keep you out of prison. <laughs> All right? Not every idea is a good idea, guys. Specifically <laughs> with law and money. Um, yeah, so, so it's true. Make sure you dot every I across every T. See you guys. Thanks, Thanks for joining. A lot, Jeremy. Yeah.